A year ago, six very different families from one large housing scheme in Kilmarnock agreed to be filmed. Their day-to-day -day lives were captured, showing the ups. And you met me, Steve O McMurray, we never on top run a mock non fucking stop. And downs of life in the scheme. So so sorry. And I love you forever, my dear. A year on, have the dreams been realized? Or dashed? No, I've got it. Have their families stayed together or been torn apart? Has the last year been plain sailing or not? I've seen somebody jumping and putting something straight into my forehead. And what does the future hold for them now? Just sitting. Just wasted, man. Just keep your block every now. When Marvin Baird was first shown in the scheme, he was living a single life with his much-loved dog, Bullet. He just loves getting kisses and cuddles through this. Having kicked drugs, Marvin was looking to start a family and got together with ex-girlfriend, 18-year-old Dana, after she was released from prison. Happy as Larry. Could not be happier. <laughs> Marvin and Dana, though, fell back into using drugs and things turned ugly. Dana, fuck off. Dana was accused of sleeping with Marvin's cousin, Chris. I, I did, just, I just, I just shagged, shagged Marvin Marvin's bud. And fell out with Marvin's family. The relationship was already in trouble. I just get him out, baby. And then Marvin was caught with drugs. Eventually, Marvin was locked up, leaving Bullet in the care of Dana, who was struggling with her addiction. I'm glad he's away. But other times, situations like this, I wish he was here. Despite Marvin being behind bars, Bullet being run over and rehomed, and Dana giving up their house because of fighting in the scheme, the relationship survived. A year on, Marvin is out of jail, drug free and looking for work. I went in there to, to sign on job seekers allowance because I'm actively looking for a, a job rather than laying about. But they're advising me to go back on the sick because they said there's, because of my left hand injury, they're saying there's, that's constantly that happens. People peeking and waving, I don't know. Hey! Yeah, see what I mean? It's, that's it. Guys come on that everywhere I go. But they have advised me a bit better getting back on the sickness benefit because there's no many jobs that we can do one hand it. But I, I said, well, wait. I said, I'm not around me sitting in front of a computer. It's just, it's, that's everywhere I go. If it's a female, a lot of the time they get out and they, they'll say, oh, can we get a picture of you? And I set up a Facebook site of my own. See, within three days, I had 931 friend requests within three days. I like the attention. Because there's a big difference between a drug addict to being back, they just, like, I mean, I'm, all I'm on is my prescription, I'm stable, I've got a great relationship with my parents again, the way things used to be. Marvin has got himself back on his own two feet, with a rented bedsit in the centre of Kilmarnock, while he now waits for Dana to get out of jail. I sleep with Dana's pyjama tap on my bed, look. Do you know if you went to prison? I've not washed it. I still smell her off it. I don't know if you saw it. Oops. I don't know. Did you see the picture there in the paper? Dana was caught trying to get drugs into jail for Marvin and was sentenced to over a year behind bars. I mean, the last visit we had, I couldn't believe how beautiful she was looking. There wasn't even a blemish in her skin. Her hair was all healthy looking, her nails, everything. She was just looking great, so she was. The situation is we're, we're engaged now, so we're, I've picked my best man, she's picked her bridesmaid, everything, we've got everything all, already. Since being filmed, Marvin has built up a special relationship with the Sun newspaper. 
I got my teeth done one night, they put me up in a hotel in case any of their papers came and tried to get a snapshot. And then the, the next day, was it, it was my day out, that was the day I had out. And that shows, look, all the different treatments. It was a laser treatment they'd done to whiten my own up. Uh, apparently it's 600 pounds for one, one course here. Yeah. I get three in the one sitting. The difference is unbelievable. That was the man that the government phoned me and asked me if they could start using my picture to warn young ones that not no to go down that road. And then I got a phone call saying that they want me to actually go down the schools myself now and speak to them. A hundred percent why they drug counselling, definitely. I mean, even my counsellor, my drug counsellor, Jeff, right, he said that there's my first met, he said to the person I'm speaking to now, it's like day and night. I didn't realise how away with it I was. I hate when people go by that and they go by and shout, oh, where's Bullet? Where's Bullet? As if to them it was a joke, and it's, to me that was heartbreaking, so it was. See, when I got out of prison, it felt like there was some, a part of me missing. See, because I was that used to what, I mean, for six years, I, it was on my side, and if I had to nip something with my foot, I knew I was coming back and his wee face would be the windy waiting for me. But, Oh, as soon as I found out, it was away. I, I lay in, I lay in my room in Bohus for four days, and the tears. I couldn't, I just couldn't stop them. Marvin has lost Bullet to another family, but he still has Dana, and is waiting to see whether she'll get early release with an electronic tag. <laughs> A year ago, the McMurray family were all living together in the same house. Mum Libby was desperate to keep her kids on the straight and narrow. Not an easy job when her eldest, James, was a long-time heroin addict. It used to be a couple of years I'd known my lady was known there. I just feel the end there. I killed all myself. I couldn't do that to my family. Her daughter, Kerry, had recently got out of jail. I'm going to drink alcohol and cousin Brian was sleeping on the floor, also a heavily addicted drug user. Libby's youngest son, 15-year-old Stephen, had seen the effect heroin was having on James and Brian and was determined to stay drug-free himself. Heavy bad man. Come in every day, smart to you, that man. Stephen had already been excluded from school and had started to get into trouble in the scheme. But Libby managed to get him to go to a local charity, which encouraged him to apply for a place at college to study joinery. So far, this is my biggest achievement. I guess it. I feel great knowing that he's done something in his life. With Stephen getting a course at college, things were looking up for Libby's family at last. But a year after being filmed, her hopes have disintegrated. After being accused of causing trouble, James and Kerry fell out with other nearby families. Libby was forced to leave the scheme, and both her boys ended up behind bars, with Stephen getting jailed for a serious assault. Today, though, Stephen is being released, and Libby and Kerry have come to Glasgow to meet him. About two and a half, three months ago, I've seen him. I've seen him once. I've seen him once. Too heartbreaking to walk away from him. Obviously, I'm the moon. It's my wee baby brother, man. He's at the jail, so he yeah, are, man. So I'm talking about it. Yeah, is that him up there with the hood up? No, isn't he? Where did he say you on the phone? He says, I'm on Buchanan Street. Buchanan Street? Buchanan Street bus station. You don't say wait there and I'll get you, man. Ah, yeah, I said to him, wait. Where did you, did you say I'm coming off the train or what? Ah, I said I'm coming off the train. Fucking hell. Unfortunately, there's no sign of Stephen at the bus station in Glasgow and Libby and Kerry think he might already be drinking his liberation grant and getting into trouble. With no sign of Stephen, Libby and Kerry head back to Kilmarnock. I'm hoping that he's made his way home. See, when I got to jail, everybody was like, Mum, we're going to get mad with that. And I was like, nah, I'm just going to aim to see my family and that. And I think that's what Stephen will do as well. Stephen, my brother's all fucking here, but can't in bus station going. for you. Would you get your name shared doing it everywhere? Why you? I was up and doing it about eight or nine times. You just go there! 
You said you were at the cannon bus station to my mum. I'll need your money now and come back through and fucking get you. Is that some just got there? Fucking hell, man. It takes an hour and a half to get there. I don't think you'll get any fucking money again. That's what he just says. In the end, Stephen finds the bus fare back to Kilmarnock. I can't wait to see him. My young blood, man. <laughs> My wee bra. I feel better knowing that he's coming here now. I don't need to hunt all the tin looking for him. It's been hell. Because he was always running about us. He was always with me. Constantly. Aye. Join the hat, you're Aye. Aye. Join the hat. There he's. Yeah. There he's. <laughs> Christmas all came at once. Oh, you have found him. I feel like screaming, letting the world know how happy I am. I tell them if you go about me. <laughs> Three meals a day? Woo! That's what I'm talking about! One thing I'll never see is I'll never eat custard again, because that's all you get, right. man. Duff, <laughs> <laughs> isn't it, son? Duff, it's how, fucking No, tough. seriously, though, how was it? No, it was, it was, I didn't like it to start with, man. It was shite to start with, but see, once I started knowing people, that it was good. Sorry, but oh, don't say that about to get back anything soon, but Stephen is going to join his mum and Kerry, sleeping on the floor of Kerry's one bed flat on the edge of the scheme. It's gonna stay here with Kerry, isn't it? Until get he gets his Just me now. I'll be back. Just I date a time then I'd gotta go and get my money and then sit about for you will. Take in Kilmarnock again, what I'm talking about. There's more good news for Libby as the whole family is due to be reunited again, when James gets out of Barleni in three days' time. Hi there, my wee ma. As you can no doubt spy for the top of the page, it's just the one and only Jaddy boy here. On the fantastic plastic, we have wee few words to say, a pure missus. Loads and loads. We see news audio soon. Uh, he's getting out on Wednesday, and they'll be coming here to see Kerry and me and Wayne and that. I don't know what his plans are for there. Probably stay a day or so and then he'll do what he's intending to do. A year ago, ex-alcoholics and self-confessed hellraisers, Gordon and Annie Cunningham, were keen to make sure their kids didn't follow in their footsteps. Don't start shouting at me. You're no staying out. Aye, all right. Their daughter, Kimberly, was into dancing and had a job. But their eldest son, Brian, was locked up for a racially aggravated breach of the peace. You give them the full work. Hey, that man had says he called him all the bin laden bastards and all that. Worse than that, the 20-year-old son, Chris, seemed to be taking heroin, just after he got 16-year-old Candice pregnant. We were talking about having a wean and that, and then it just happened. Candice was keen to keep the baby, against her mum, Kay's advice. What are you going to do if you've got a tenner, right, and you're needing nappies and milk, and Chrissy needs a bag of smack? Who's going to run? Kay was worried about Chris's drug habit and thought Chris was slipping more and more heavily into using heroin. Fuck them, man, they can see what they want. They ain't doing about me. Gordon and Annie lost hope of helping Chris. The amount he's taking, he's just going to get down the hole rapidly and rapidly and rapidly. And there's, there's not much I can do about it. And Candice ended up having the baby, despite her mum's worries about Chris's drug use. <laughs> A year on, Chris has spent time in jail, but is now out of prison and living at home. I tried to get him off the hair on. A couple of times I'd be locking them in and buying them tablets and that, but it didn't work. But when he got left it and got put to prison, he'd no other option. He couldn't get it and that was that. So I think it gave him time to think and all. I've got the way and everything. I've got the way and everything. The social worker was saying he wasn't allowed to be near the vein because of the drugs. I says, but he's not on drugs now, he's on a methadone prescription. And she says it's in case he's got the way in him and he bumps into any old pals. He'd been easily led, he was just do it. It's all right, Christopher, seeing it wasn't happen, but 
You don't care to get put in that position. There's a tea because I already did it, I already did it, not that time. It was 18 drugs at the time. After she came up here and done a meeting with me, Christopher and Candice, and he, she says she was happy to, for the to be here with Christopher. But before that, he wasn't allowed to be staying in the same house as the So that's how he was let, thought they were calling him a beast and all that. In Kilmarnock, at Marvin's bedsit, an old friend, Tam, has moved in next door. Marvin's dreams of working as a drug counsellor and fronting an anti-drug campaign in schools have been devastated by mobile phone footage, which the Sun newspaper have put on their website, allegedly showing Marvin smoking heroin. The video is between two and a half to three years ago. It has been somebody in my company that has took a video, they've forgot, they've had it on video, but, but what I think, or they would have put it in before now, and then they've been looking maybe through a memory card, an old SIM card or something, and they've came across this video, and they've thought, I'll get money for it. I, and I, before this happened, up in Allies, where I volunteer, there have been a, a few people discussing, trying to set me up. Because they were all talking about, oh, they're all for a thousand pounds, they're all for a thousand pounds, if we can get them taking smack. They can buy me as much as they want, but they'll not get me sitting taking it anymore. Worst thing is they've portrayed me as the full of Britain, has been back on it. I mean, that was the headline, back on smack. Marvin claims that politician Nicola Sturgeon has even asked him to help front an anti-drugs campaign. If there's any paper that she's withdrew any allegations that I was to get in the schools, we are right, which obviously she's going to withdraw her name as soon as that's been put in the paper. I can understand that, right? She's seen no, it was the photo, it was the photograph we were thinking about using, but now we'll have to look into you even using that. But I was asked here in the schools, right, and I, just, I, don't, need to prove, I don't need to prove that to anybody. Marvin and Tam have both had chaotic lives and both of their girlfriends are in prison. But Tam has had good news. I just found out a week ago that my girlfriend, she went to Greenock night. He's going to be a... You can't be, I've, and I've been choking for that way, Jules, a, all my daddy. daddy. <laughs> I've been choking to my daddy all my life. She'll keep shouting, just say, still no that, I've got somebody in. She's not getting in, and it's, it's Dana's sister. It's not in a stable predicament, and we're right. So I do not know what, whether I can, whether I can give these away or no. If that's Dana's mum's ashes, right? But she'll just newly been packed. That's her dad's. She's wanting in, but she's saying it's just this she's wanting in for. It's not a case she would come in, take them and go. She would make some excuse to sit around her. The other woman interests me now. Do you know we're proud to have her in your arm, eh? Do you know we're proud to have that wee hottie walking down here, arm in arm? <laughs> That's my wee woman there. Love her a bit, so I can't wait. Stephen is out of prison and staying with his sister, Kerry. But it's a one-bedroom flat. His mum is also sleeping there sometimes, and he's nowhere else to go. I have not been so... No, I've not been supported with money. She just gave me food when she's had it, but she's not got any now. She was expecting me to pay for it, and I've not got any money, and I'm getting through the night if I don't get her money. But it's so after to sleep out in the streets until I get paid, because you won't give me money. Under these... Fuck off, you dark cow, man. Oh, fucking smell about man. I went for a crisis loan, so I could pay Kerry Diggs, and I've not to get paid for weeks, and I need to buy food. And they're saying I'm not, I, I'm not in a crisis. Well, you said I'm a crisis. I've got no money or nothing. You know what I mean? Fucking idiots make help them. I've got to get through it. No, I, obviously your sister's been supporting me until now. She's not got to throw you. How did? How the fuck do they know that? She could be throwing me for all they know. Fucking idiots, man. My sister's at me stay a wee while. Yeah. Hopefully I'll get my house. That'll be a start. At 17, Stephen already feels trapped into a chaotic lifestyle. See, like, places like this, man, jobless people just have to make, make do with what they've got, end up fucking mad alkies and all that, like if eight weekends, all sorts of shit like that, man. 
that's how heavy family family feuds and all that stuff. You know what I mean? I think that's how this place gets a heavy bad name, man. And that's how the people in it get a bad name. If you leave school with no qualifications, you're not going to get a healthy job unless you want to work in Asda or something. Where if you've got a criminal record like me, you get taken to fuck off because you've been done for robbery. You can't even work in tills. And that's for life for the future, man. Beyond the brew, rest of my days, Dawson in my sister's house. Either I'm a mad alky or I'm a mad pothead. Never a smart kid, never a smart kid. Just sitting. Just wasted, man. Just to pure block everything out. Just block the shit out. So, a big circle, man. Every place you go to, people are the same. Lifestyle's the same. Drug taking's the same. Everything, man. And no matter where you go, you don't change. So, it's the same at the end of the day, isn't it? <laughs> One person who seems to be breaking the cycle is Chris. That's what changed my life, the brain and Candice, basically. It's just different now, it's like hang before a day hangs, not now. For the way it used to be to the noise, it has changed a lot. I'm proud of you. I don't even drink or nothing, I just don't do nothing. Just sit and make Candice in the bed. Just... You have drunk a couple of times. No, 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 like grand for days at a time, no. No, he doesn't do that anymore. I was just waiting to get a house, me, Candice, and the rain, and they just settled in for there. Mm-hmm. Just whenever. Mm-hmm. Marvin's local celebrity has backfired after a girl asked Marvin for a photo and her boyfriend took offence. I met a quarter of the day for uh, an incident when the boy held a knife at my neck and I managed to get the knife off him. And when I ran away, I ran, I ran into where the police were and I was done with possession of an offensive weapon. So it's not, it's not that exactly looking good. It's one of the worst charges to be up for the new. So it is. As you see, I've got my bag and I'm prepared for the worst. It's going to mark doing up for the tags, so it is. Because she would do it at any, maybe next week probably. But the tag was to my, to my flat. And if I go to prison, then obviously I'll lose the flat, so she's not getting a dress. So she is going to hold it her in prison to me. I just hope Neil's got the gift of the gab head on. Because he is he's a good solicitor. Yeah. All right. I've been in I've not seen him for two years. Oh, ah, is it, is it? See you later, mate. Go away. Come on. Yes, no, I'll go away, mate. I'm not shy. I'm very shy. Even though Dana's out of prison soon, Marvin's dreams of marriage are again in jeopardy as possession of a knife normally carries a long sentence behind bars. Marvin may be heading to jail, but round at Kerry's flat, James, Libby's eldest boy, has just got out of Barlini. There he is, my boy. Aha, aha. What have I been fed out, man? I've been told to see you, you cracker jack. Yeah, that's your sweet about James, man. He never bounced into back in Ames one and hand with me horn dog. Oh, I'm happy back with the McMuzzle attack. <laughs> not very often you get us in the happy. Not very often at all. James is going to be staying at Kerry's until he decides what to do next. Time in prison has meant that he is now truly drug free for the first time in years. I can save some people's lives in it. My case, me, because I was in a bad way before I went there. Yeah, I'm good, I don't even want that now. When I thought he was in jail, he was fucking half his nut, man. Pure skinny and all that. Pure, it looked like he was dying, man. Looked in a heavy bad way, she knew. I think he looks healthy for it, man. The jail's done a lot for him. It's the way he used to be. When I went to F3 cell before the drug to I suppose everybody does it. Three them back together. It's my life complete. 
I can dunk him on top of the bottle. This is my back door, man. I look up to him, you know what I mean? So he's some size a boy, man. And he'll be staying that way. I'm getting to fucking David. The free meat mazas back to back. Here we go. Marvin has managed to persuade the judge that he is the innocent party concerning the knife and has walked out of court a free man. Well, I'm happy as laddie. <laughs> God, yeah, man. Circumstances and it was an unprovoked attack on me just because his girlfriend has been a bit too friendly. Oh, I, honestly, I don't even, I can't even explain how I feel. 95% sure I was getting in jail with it. Marvin has escaped time behind bars, but he's more concerned that he's found out who has scuppered his chances of fronting a drugs campaign by sending an old footage to the sun. Although Chris Cunningham is denying it, Marvin is certain that he is the culprit. You get five hundred pounds for a five hundred pounds for losing a relationship to somebody that's. Well, he's took the memory card, put it in his new phone, and these pictures have come up, and he's been like, oh, I'll see that's just the new, like two days ago. I discussed it, I'm doing that, so I'm all right after everything I've done for him. I mean, I, I, I took him in it when he was 15, no, he, was, he was nine months when he moved in with me and my parents. And I took him everywhere. Then, when he was 15, when I moved into Algar Place, he moved in there, and I Bought him everything, every bit of clothing, everything. I kept him going, didn't I? And they, no, it wasn't just normal clothes, it was clothes that were designer, it was costing me a lot of money. James has been drinking heavily since he got out of prison. He had a traumatic childhood and he turned to heroin use as a teenager, becoming heavily addicted. He's trying to see the best way forward. Go away from here for a starter. And that's the biggest hope I've got. Just to get to this away from this shit hole. Just get to stay here. You don't get opportunities in this dump. Don't get nothing. All you get is a drug habit in here. No, it doesn't need to be perfect, just normal. Just a normal life, like everybody else. That's all I want. No drugs, no nothing. I've never had any goodness, no. It's only a month till Dana gets out of jail, but Marvin has been badly beaten up after declining a photo while out drinking one night. Because of his head injuries, Marvin's family are making sure that one of them is always there to keep an eye on him. The police came about 10 o'clock the next morning. Apparently they'd been here all during the night because the CCTV had seen me staggering all the way around with blood running down my face because uh, my nose was burst, my mouth was all burst and the cuts for my head, the blood was, my full face was covered. And I come in and I went a sponge, kind of cleaned it a wee bit as best as I thought I'd cleaned it, but I hadn't, it was all dirt inside it. And I just held a sponge to it and I come through and put the sponge against the bed and just lay with my forehead against the sponge. And it's the worst thing I could have done, I could have ended up in a coma or anything. I actually burst out laughing because I got that much of a fright. Oh, was like, what happened to your face? They gave me a CAT scan, see that, a CT scan for my brain. For my brain. I don't know if the fun man, mind you. Maybe fun a wee bit, yeah, but it's like a Malteser or something like that. <laughs> Round at Kerry's flat, James has disappeared, and Libby fears that he may already be back to his old ways. Because he was heavy on the drink the last time I seen him. We were just waking up in the morning and starting again. I still don't know. No one to say he has if he's not up, but I'll just knock his confidence away again. I'd know if I'd seen him. Whether he touched on him or not. I haven't seen him, so I don't know. Natural prospects, doing us and everybody was shutting them. Anybody has got a record of any chance. Stephen has another assault charge pending, 
and may soon be heading back to prison. Sometimes I think it'd be a last to go back to the jail just because it's pure boring out here. I've got nothing to do here. At least I'm there, I've got things to do. Nothing happens out here. And, and see, like, if pressure gets to you, like, you want to go back to the jail. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's somewhere you can sort your head out in it. It's just the jail for you, isn't it? But... Right. It's your time to think away for you every day. Okay. Because you're looking at a gaff all the time. I went for an interview last Monday. They told me they phoned me in two weeks for uh, an induction, so that's maybe a sort of what the job in it. Working in Belcher's uh, food factory, looking at like, like a sausage, you know, make sausages and chat like meat factory. <laughs> but it's pure freezing, I get tell. You need safety boots and about 25 litres of clothing. <laughs> Kerry's putting her life up. Kerry's putting her life up with a can in her own. As you do. <laughs> A month after he was assaulted, Marvin has travelled over two hours to Stirling to visit Dana in jail. Marvin and Dana had talked about being engaged, but Marvin now has a ring and is ready to make things official. I've just never had enough money to get a ring I wanted to get, so I've got a ring here for her. I just want to, just want to place a ring in her finger just to give her a wee bit more reassurance that I'm deadly serious about her. We're having, a, we're having a fresh start. The two of us have agreed when she comes out, like everything in the past we're forgetting about. And getting married, that'll be the, the biggest step towards a fresh start. Every time she sees me, it's like, well, look, you're putting on my airway, you're putting on my airway, you're looking great. I think she's a wee bit paranoid because I'm, I think she thinks I'm going to go and go with somebody else, but it mean, never crossed my mind. I mean, I've waited eight months, I've been loyal to her, so I think I'm going to muck up in the last four weeks. I love her too much. She means the world to me, and she, if she says yes, I'll be happy as Larry. Time will tell if Dana is really keen to make their engagement official. Right. James has been away from Kerry's flat for days, and the whole family feared the worst. But he's back. And has started a new relationship. Bring me some tobacco back. No, I want to join that. Maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Kerry. My girlfriend. I've known her for years, just that she was with somebody else, and now she's known. I've, 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 I've got her now. She's done nothing but look after me, if I get it. If it wasn't for her, I'd probably be locked up again. So everything's rosy. I've never felt so good. This is the best I've felt in years, honestly. She gets me, she, she knows what I'm about. It's the day other birds try to take the cunt at me. They yeah, come back here calmly. Just don't be getting into trouble. As an ex addict herself, James's girlfriend, Kerry, knows getting together with him is a risky decision. I'm bipolar. I've been off everything for eight years, so... Um, but I've known, J I've known James for years, and I just wanted to take him away from it. So I know I'm going to take him away from it. Take them together. Kerry is keeping James on the straight and narrow, and knows what she's taking on. I get out of prison. I was 21, and when I got out after that, I feel like I'm at home. I just didn't look back, didn't touch nothing, but put on a prescription, put on a prescription for my uh, mental health problems. Um, and James has got to have to put it together because I need a, somebody to look after me because of my illness. It's like, you know the way Stacey Slater is in EastEnders? The part she plays, that's the way up, down, up, down. But if he wants a normal life, then <coughs> he needs to stop all this. That's what he does. And, and he's no touch anything like that wise. And if he does, he knows it's over because it disgusts me. I try and tell him after the first few months, and the more you get, like your laptops and your phones and your tellies, the more respect you start to feel for yourself, the more respect. Even your enemies start to respect you, but a lot of people do try and drag them back in. Eh? 
Marvin's visiting time is up, and he's proposed to Dana. Everything went okay. She said yes, and she put, she put a ring on her finger. She's made me so happy. The train's at 33 minutes past. Got eight minutes to get to the paint station. If I miss this, I'm going to wait on the other way. Marvin's dreams have all come true. But not missing the train home seems to have become number one priority. How's that not going in? Huh? My name's Ryan. Pushing it in. Right, that's your turn. That's for Commander Glasgow. Right. Catch you later, right? Cheers, mate. Go back! James is back from his shopping trip and, against Kerry's advice, has bought more alcohol. Don't argue with me, maybe. I need that paint of milk for my guts. Don't argue with me, don't argue. For your guts. Go ahead and kiss and they'll put my soft side out. Oh, no. You'll take. Don't, don't even kid on you've got a soft side. She says you want me to drink, but I need it because I'm fucking rough as a badger. There's a cup here. <laughs> yeah, you didn't try to hate them for me. For fuck's sake, you're caught. Just sit them down. Caught <laughs> blowing hard, dude. Yeah, yeah. Right, D-O-M-G. There's the ashtray, bruv. James, I've never looked at Ash Ross, and it's because of you. What? Scared to go to sleep. That's what he made. That's his option. Yeah, that's my option. So, he seems to be picking me then. Stop. Mm. They just take it because they want the yeah, boys and everything. They just chasing the boys. But some of them take it to escape the past. Alright, like. to escape life, just to escape. What's in front of you? All your problems? And it's just a short term fix. Marvin and Dana have at last been reunited, as she's just been released from jail. They've come to Glasgow on a shopping spree for Dana, who's over the moon to be free again and back with Marvin. Good, happy, relieved that I'm walking back with him. But it's weird, I know, walking back next to him because of the height. Lovely, guys. Thank you for hey, so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Well, all right. Nice meeting you, Paul. Right. Even I've been cutting through to go and visit Dana. I've been stuck loads of times with people asking for pictures, but I'm always in a wrong bus stop. The happy couple are planning to get his and hers tattoos to celebrate their reunion. Excuse me, Paul, we need a deal of tattoos, there's a bit here. Right. Yeah, I can't see the luck meter. And I'm getting Dana tattooed down the inside of my arm, and Dana's going to, I don't know where. I'm getting Marvin's name somewhere. I'm thinking about the there, right, there. but then it'd fade yeah. off. I'm thinking about getting it on my neck or the back of my neck or something. Back, I want it somewhere where people yeah. can see. They just need to find a place that can take them without an appointment. On the left or the right? The right. Oh. There's Oh, well, I've not had bullet for nearly two years. Aye. Right, thanks, dear. I've been doing that picture. Right, batter in. Yeah, then you boys know where Terry's tattoo is. Even given their newfound popularity, Marvin and Dana are having no joy finding a tattoo parlour that can squeeze them in. One man, that's that man. She had Tony and Ringo. No, she never. I think she did because I felt her horn like you fucked the girl line again. Horn, and, then girl girl went, and then girl went and then girl went towards her like that. Oh, After hours on the shopping spree, trouble is brewing. Yeah. I don't I'm want to. I don't want to go to Prima. I don't want to go this way. Oh, we're going to find Prima. No, we're going to find the tattoo. If she's happy, then I'm happy, and I know the tattoo's going to make right, him happy, no so I'm happy if he's happy. I know no but he's, he's thinking of me, wanting right, me to go to the place. Right. A month after getting together, James and Kerry have set up home in a new flat, but that's not the end of their good news. It's just a temporary one. I know what I want, but this one's just temporary. Let me see, well, it's all well, well, bad. We'll do as you know. Hey, baby. Mm. Been here about three weeks or something. Everything's going pretty well. All right. A bit better. I'm getting this week off. Done up. James is still battling his heroin cravings, but is controlling things with a proper methadone prescription. A couple of weeks I was at the jail, I took a bit here and there, and I was like, oh, this is fucking 
It's going to do this, it's going to back to square one. Come on, I screwed up in that now, so. Let's keep my right, keeps my wing ticking on that. It's only 40 more, but right? it stops me thinking about it. I can't know him. He has good days and he's bad days, but I just have to be there and support him as much as I can, knowing what it was like. We've all got to give him, but it was too far away for James and his mum because they've got really, really, really close because James has been off of heroin. Him and his wee brother never had a relationship, and now they have. He, he even... He'll say it to me on the phone, but when I say it to James, he'll just say, tell James I love him. Although James and Stephen have now rebuilt their relationship, it may be cut short, as Stephen's assault charge has finally caught up with him. Having admitted his guilt, but failed to show up for social reports and final sentencing, the outlook is bleak. My lawyer sent me a letter telling me about my co accused court and all that and telling me um, that uh, they'd issued a bond for me. Post a bond for me now. No, because I've got a bond that they've got to pure smash me now. It's got to be quite hard on me now. I don't want to go back to jail a couple of months after I've been out. I hoped I'd be for at least a year or something before I ended up getting back in the jail. Just feel like a pure. Dick, what I feel, <laughs> honestly, because I've got myself in all this trouble, you know what I mean, when it could have been easily sorted. Could have went and got my reports done, I should have woke up earlier, got my reports done, went, went to court, probably wouldn't even get to jail, get to community service or something, probably. But no, I fucked everything up, man. Stephen is expecting the police to come for him. But across town, they've just arrested someone else. Marvin has breached a probation condition by missing a meeting and is on his way to the cells. Just a day into a new start, Dana is devastated. I mean, Marvin was the only person that was... <laughs> keep me in the right and well, unless I'd be back, I'd probably have come like this all day and then get fully hit and back on the drug and he's the only person that kept me to feel strong and he's been taken away and... He makes me feel good about myself. He always gives me compliments. He'll, he'll do anything for me. I don't know, I just love everything about him. Like most people will say, oh, what are you doing with him? I can do better, but... To me, I can't do better. It's not on the outside, it's what's on the inside. And I don't think... I find him attractive and... If I, if I love him, and then that's what makes us done it. Stephen is still trying to avoid the police and is expecting a long prison sentence when he's arrested. Chris and Candice fell out and have now separated. Marvin was released after a night in the cells and he and Dana are still determined to make a good life for themselves and get married as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> 